the day we're taking a look at these MLB matches, which are happening on Tuesday, May 16, 2023, and giving you our team and total picks for today. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and to push the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also check out our Patreon if you want access to our premium picks. Our Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money, and if you are interested in props and parlay picks, check out our new channel High Stakes Props and Parlays, where you can find our player props and parlay picks predictions. You will find the link to our Patreon and to our new channel in the description and comment section below. Tampa Bay Rays vs New York Mets the Tampa Bay Rays have not yet dropped more than two games in a row and avoided doing so again after an 8-7 victory over the Yankees on Sunday. The win didn't come without a scare as the final out came on an Aaron Judge deep fly ball that died at the warning track. The Rays' offense has been tremendous. They are 19-3 at home this season, but their bats have especially been strong on the road, where they are 12-8. Away from Tropicana Field, the Rays are batting .289 with 41 home runs and scoring 6.3 runs per game, which all led the big leagues. Juani Franco, 0.301 AVG, 7 HR, 23 RBI, and a team best 2.5 war. Randy Arizarena, 0.320 AVG, 10 HR, 35 RBI, leads the team in RBI, and is tied with Yandy Diaz, 0.321, 10 HR, 24 RBI, for the home run lead. The Rays have the superior offense, and with the extra day of rest, their bullpen will be in a good position to keep the Mets' bats down. No team has hit the ball better on the road or been more consistent than the Rays this season. With Verlander on the mound, the Mets have appeal, but they have been inconsistent this season, and I give the late-game advantage to Tampa Bay and will back them to at least stay within a run. Our team pick is Tampa Bay Rays plus 1.5 runs. The Mets starting pitchers are 13-16 with a 5.28 ERA overall this season, and the bullpen has been better with a 6-4 record and 3.78 ERA. Starting Tuesday will be Justin Verlander, who the Mets hope will help improve the starting rotation and maybe even lead them to an NL pennant. Verlander went 18-4 with a 1.75 ERA last season for the Houston Astros and won the Al Cy Young. This season Verlander missed more than the first month of the season and is 1-1 with a 2.25 ERA within two starts. In 22 career starts against Tampa Bay, Verlander is 11-5 with a 3.19 ERA, which includes the postseason, but he has not faced them since 2019. Our total pick is over. Seattle Mariners vs Boston Red Sox Seattle is 21-21 heading into its series with Boston and five games out of first place in the AL West. Is this team still a playoff contender? The next few weeks will be telling. The Mariners score 4.35 runs per game, 15th, and hit .225, 30th, with a .675 ops, 27th. They've hit 41 home runs, 22nd, and stolen 24 bases, 22nd, in 2023. The Seattle pitching staff has compiled a 3.30 ERA, 4th, and a 1.15 whip, 2nd, with 20 quality starts. Boston has overachieved so far this season, but after a three-game sweep at home to St. Louis, it's now sitting in last place in the AL East. Is this team back where it belongs? Boston averages 5.51 runs per game, 3rd, and hits .267, 3rd, with a .783 ops, 3rd. It's hit 51 long balls, 10th, and stolen 26 bags, 20th this year. The Red Sox pitching staff has posted a 5.02 ERA, 27th, and a 1.36 whip, 22nd, with 9 quality starts. The Red Sox are 0-4 in their last 4 games versus a right-handed starter, and the Mariners are 4-0 in their last 4 road games versus a right-handed starter. Seattle is 6-1 in its last 7 road games, 5-1 in its last 6 games versus a starter, with a whip greater than 1.30, and 5-1 in their last 6 road games, with a total set at 9.0 to 10.5. Boston is 1-5 in its last 6 overall, and 1-4 in its last 5 games, with a total set at 9.0 to 10.5. I'm betting on Seattle to win straight up Tuesday at Fenway Park. Castillo held the Red Sox scoreless in his lone start against Boston last season, surrendering one hit and fanning 10 batters. That appearance came as a member of the Cincinnati Reds, he'll have a better supporting cast tomorrow. Seattle is scoring 4.6 runs per game on the road and 4.7 runs in night games this season, with better splits against righties than lefties. Pavetta is an average starter at best and is coming off a horrid showing against Atlanta, 7 runs on 8 hits and 3 walks in 4 innings. I get the impression the Mariners are starting to find their groove after a slow start, taking care of business in Detroit last weekend and taking 2 of 3 from Houston the previous weekend. The Red Sox have lost 5 of their last 6 and were just swept by the lowly Cardinals at home. 
with Castillo on the bump and the money line at minus 140, I feel the best bet is on the Mariners to win SU take Mariners money line. Pavetta takes the mound for the Sox in Game 2. The righty only threw four frames in his last start, putting 12 runners on base and surrendering seven earned runs. Pavetta, who has a 36-15 KBB ratio this season, did pick up a win in his prior outing, holding Toronto to three runs on six hits in six innings. Our total pick is under. Milwaukee Brewers vs. St. Louis Cardinals. The Brewers played well over the past week, and they've won five of their last seven games. They will try to keep the momentum going with a win over the Cardinals, which will give them their sixth win in their last eight games and increase their lead in the NL Central standings. Milwaukee is averaging 4.36 runs per game. Their .242 batting average is 17th in the league. Their .318 on base percentage is also 17th, while their .390 slugging percentage is 20th. William Contreras leads the Brewers with a .266 batting average. Rowdy Tellez leads the team with 10 home runs, while Willie Adames leads the team with 23 RBI. Milwaukee's pitching has been good, with the team giving up 3.92 runs per game. Opponents have a .237 batting average against the Brewers, which is 9th in the league. Their 3.65 ERA is 8th, while their 1.24 whip is 9th. In his last start, Mealy gave up 6 hits and 7 runs in 5 innings, leading to an 8-1 loss to the Dodgers. They will need a significantly better effort from him if they want to get the win. The Brewers have won 5 of their last 7 games. They are playing well offensively and scored at least 5 runs in 4 of their last 7 games. Expect them to play well offensively in this game because Montgomery has struggled on the mound this season, especially at home where he has given up 14 runs in 4 starts. He gave up 6 runs in his last home start against the Brewers and will have a hard time slowing them down in this game. The Cardinals have 5 of their last 6 games, but they've lost 5 of their last 6 home games. Despite their slump, they are playing well offensively at home, scoring 21 runs in their last three home games. But, they will struggle offensively in this game because Mealy has done a good job on the mound away from home, giving up only six runs in three road starts. He gave up 10 runs in his last five starts against the Cardinals, and with Milwaukee having the seventh best bullpen in the league, they won't have a hard time keeping St. Louis's offense in check. Go with Milwaukee to cover the money line. The Cardinals played well on their road trip, and they've won five of their last six games. They are back home and will be trying to make up some ground in the division standings with a win over the Brewers, which will give them their sixth win in their last seven games. St. Louis is averaging 4.53 runs per game. Their .258 batting average is eighth in the league. Their .327 on base percentage is 10th, while their .422 slugging percentage is 11th. Paul Goldschmidt leads the Cardinals with a .310 batting average, while Nolan Gorman leads the team with 9 home runs and 27 RBI. St. Louis's pitching hasn't been good, with the team giving up 4.98 runs per game. Opponents have a .274 batting average against the Cardinals, which is 29th in the league. Their 4.63 ERA is 21st, while their 1.48 whip is 27th. In his last start, Montgomery gave up 7 hits and 6 runs in 5 innings, leading to a 10-4 loss to the Cubs. They will need a better performance from him if they want to win this game. Our total pick is over. Atlanta Braves vs Texas Rangers. Atlanta suffered their first road series loss of the season as they were swept north of the border by the Blue Jays after Sunday's walk-off loss. The Braves entered Monday's action 25-15 on the year and led the NL East by five games over the Phillies in the standings. On Sunday, Atlanta got two hits each from Ronald Acuna Jr., two runs, RBI, and Austin Riley to pace a 10-hit attack, only to fall short. Kevin Piller, his fourth, Ozzie Albies, his tenth, and Acuna Jr., his eighth, each went deep in the loss. Colin McHugh started and didn't factor in the decision as he threw 1.2 innings, allowing three runs, none earned, on six hits with two walks and two strikeouts. Raisel Iglesias, 0-1, took the loss in relief as he allowed two runs on three hits, with one walk and no strikeouts in two-thirds of an inning. Monday saw the Rangers switch things up on the mound as they sent Cody Bradford to the hill for his major league debut. That moves Dunning to this contest against a Braves pitching staff that is loaded with question marks. Max Fried and Kyle Wright are on the Illinois. Neither is expected back before at least late June. That leaves the Braves with Morton, who threw Monday, Spencer Strider, who will pitch Wednesday, and Bryce Elder, who pitched Saturday, along with the ever-popular undecided in the other spots. After McHugh was roughed up in spot duty Sunday and Dylan Dodd pitching for Gwynnett Sunday as well, that leaves few options for the Braves on the mound. Meanwhile, Dunning has done a solid job filling in for Degram on the mound, and that's enough to give the Rangers the advantage in the mound matchup. Give the edge accordingly to Texas in this one. 
Texas used a big eighth inning to break a 3-3 tie with the A's Sunday and rolled to the victory, taking three of four games in the series. The Rangers entered Monday 25-15 on the season and held a four-game lead over the Astros for the top spot in the Al West. On Sunday Texas got three hits each from Robbie Grossman, two runs, three RBI, and Atlas Garcia, two runs, five RBI, to lead the way in the win. Grossman, his fifth, and Garcia, his tenth, each homered in the contest for the Rangers. Andrew Heaney pitched well but ended up with a no decision as he allowed one run on four hits with two walks and nine strikeouts over six innings. Jonathan Hernandez, 1-1, blew the lead but picked up the vulture win after allowing two runs on two hits with no walks and one strikeout in one inning of relief. Our total pick is over.